House of Gucci is a 2021 American biographical crime drama film directed by Ridley Scott, based on the 2001 book The House of Gucci, a sensational story of murder, madness, glamour, and greed by Sarah Gay Forden. The film follows Patricia Regini and Maurizio Gucci, as their romance transforms into a fight for control of the Italian fashion brand Gucci. Jared Leto, Jeremy Irons, Jack Houston, Salma Hayek, and Al Pacino also star. Scott wanted to make a film about the Gucci dynasty after acquiring rights to Forden's book in the early 2000s. The project languished for several years, with a number of directors and rumored actors being considered before Scott and Gaga became officially attached in November 2019. Much of the remaining cast joined the following summer and filming began in Italy, lasting from February through May 2021. The world premiere of House of Gucci was held at the Odeon Lux Leicester Square in London on November 9, 2021. It was theatrically released by United Artists releasing in the United States on November 24, 2021. The film received mixed reviews from critics who praised the cast's performances, but criticized the inconsistent tone and editing. Gaga and Leto were nominated for the Critics' Choice Award, Screen Actors Guild Award, and Satellite Award for Best Actress and Best Supporting Actor, respectively, with the former also receiving nominations for the BAFTA Award and Golden Globe Award. The film earned a nomination at the 94th Academy Awards for Best Makeup and Hairstyling. It has grossed over $154 million against a $75 million budget. Plot In 1978, Patricia Regini is the office manager of her father's small trucking firm. At a party in the early 80s, she meets Maurizio Gucci, a law student and heir to a 50% interest in the Gucci fashion house through his father Rodolfo. Patricia aggressively pursues the awkward Maurizio charming him into love. Rodolfo warns Maurizio that Patricia is only after wealth and tells him he will disinherit him if he marries Patricia, Maurizio chooses her over his connection to Gucci, leaving the family. Patricia and Maurizio marry, and he gets a job at the trucking company. When Patricia becomes pregnant, she sees her child as an avenue for familial reconciliation. She lets it slip to Maurizio's uncle Aldo that she is pregnant, he is delighted by the news and takes the couple under his wing. Aldo introduces Patricia to his eccentric son Paolo, who aspires to be a designer within Gucci despite his lack of talent. Aldo helps Maurizio and a terminally ill Rodolfo reconcile shortly before the latter's death. Rodolfo writes Maurizio back into his will but fails to sign a document transferring the Gucci shares to him before he dies. Patricia forges Rodolfo's signature, giving Maurizio a 50% interest in Gucci. Patricia devises a plot to obtain controlling interest in Gucci by acquiring some of Aldo and Paolo's shares. She clashes with Aldo over the firm's clandestine sale of cheap fake Gucci products on the black market, and begins to consult Giuseppina Pina, a psychic, for guidance. She manipulates Maurizio, who has little real interest in Gucci, into taking a more active role within the company. Paolo acquires proof that Aldo has been evading taxes in the United States, he gives this to Patricia in exchange for her promise that he will be allowed to design his own line. Aldo is arrested by the IRS and sentenced to a year and a day in prison. Patricia lies to the Italian police and tells them that Paolo is not authorized to use the Gucci trademark, so they stop his fashion show by force. Patricia and Maurizio ask Paolo to sell them his shares, but he rebuffs and cuts ties with them. Italian police search Maurizio's, attempting to arrest him for forging Rodolfo's signature. His family flees to Switzerland, where Maurizio meets his old friend Paola Franchi. After an argument between Maurizio and Patricia, he decides he is tired of his wife's influence on himself and the company. He orders his wife and daughter to return to Italy and begins an affair with Paola, which Pina seemingly senses. 
When Maurizio's business plans harm the company, he seeks assistance from equity company Invest Corp, through which he hatches a scheme to acquire shares of the company from a now impoverished Paolo. Aldo returns from prison and immediately realizes what Paolo has done. When Invest Corp offers to buy Aldo out, he refuses until Maurizio reveals himself as the deal's instigator. Dejected, Aldo sells the shares and cuts contact with Maurizio. Patricia attempts a reconciliation with Maurizio, but he flatly ignores her. Later, he asks her for a divorce through his longtime assistant Domenico de Sol, which she refuses. Maurizio recruits up incoming designer Tom Ford to revitalize the company's image through a new line. His products are successful, but Maurizio has so thoroughly mismanaged the company that, by 1995, Invest Corp's leaders feel compelled to buy him out, replacing him with Tom and Domenico. Patricia eventually grows so furious with Maurizio that she asks Pina to help her assassinate him. She puts her in contact with two hitmen. A few days later, they shoot Maurizio to death in broad daylight outside his office. Closing intertitles describe the fate of the remaining characters, Aldo died of prostate cancer in 1990 and Paolo died in poverty shortly following the sale of their shares to Maurizio. Patricia, Pina, and the hitmen are sentenced to long prison terms following their arrest for murder. Gucci is fully acquired by Invest Corp and successfully managed into the present, no Gucci family members remain at the company. In the final scene, Patricia takes her husband's last name while announcing herself in court, indicating that she still considers herself to be a Gucci even if the law does not. Cast Production Development In June 2006, Ridley Scott was set to direct a film about the downfall of the Gucci family dynasty, with Andrea Berloff writing the script, despite the family's dismissal of the project, with Angelina Jolie and Leonardo DiCaprio rumored to play Patricia Regini and Maurizio Gucci. In February 2012, Scott's daughter Jordan Scott had replaced him as director and was in talks with Penelope Cruz to play Regini. In November 2016, Wong Kar Wai took over as director from Jordan Scott, with Charles Randolph writing alongside Berloff and Margot Robbie now considered to play Regini. In November 2019, Ridley Scott was once again set to direct the film, with Roberto Bentivegna writing the script, and Lady Gaga set to star. According to the Gucci CEO, Marco Bizzari, the fashion house cooperated with the production and gave them full access to their archives for wardrobe and props. Gaga explained that she took into account how her longtime friend Tony Bennett feels about Italians being represented in film in terms of crime, and aspired to make a real person out of Patricia, not a caricature. To achieve that, she studied Regine's vocal cadence and attitude. She explained, I felt the best way to honor Maurizio and Italians was for my performance to be authentic, from the perspective of a woman. Not an Italian-American woman but an Italian woman. She stayed in character for 18 months, speaking with an accent for nine months during that period. She also ad-libbed many of her lines, including the film's iconic quote Father, Son and House of Gucci which went viral after the release of the film's first trailer. Casting In November 2019, it was announced that Gaga would play Regini. In April 2020, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer acquired the rights to the film. By August, Adam Driver, Jared Leto, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Jack Houston and Reeve Carney had entered negotiations to join the cast. Driver, Lito, Pacino, and De Niro were confirmed by October. Houston and Carney were confirmed in December along with Jeremy Irons, while De Niro had exited the film. Darius Wolski announced his involvement as cinematographer that same month. Camille Cotton joined the cast in January 2021. In March, Mdlina Diana Ganea, Mehdi Nebu, and Milaud Murad Benamara were added to the cast along with Salma Hayek, 
who is married to the CEO of Gucci's parent company, François-Henri Pinot. Filming In August 2020, it was reported that the filming was expected to begin when Scott completed production of The Last Duel. On February 3, 2021, Lito said that the film was still in the pre-production phase and they would start shooting it in Italy in the coming weeks. Principal photography began in Rome at the end of February, with COVID-19 safety precautions in place. Several scenes were filmed in early March in the cities of Gressoni St. Jean and Gressoni La Trinit, specifically in the Italian Alps in the Aosta Valley, which were used to recreate the tourist complex of St. Moritz in Switzerland. Filming also took place in other locations in the country such as Florence, Lake Como, and Milan, including the Villanicchi Campiglio. At the end of March, they returned to Rome to shoot scenes at Via Condotti. Filming wrapped on May 8. Release and Marketing House of Gucci had its world premiere at the Odeon Lux Leicester Square in London on November 9, 2021. It was released theatrically in North America on November 24, 2021, and in the United Kingdom on November 26. Following its theatrical release, it will also be available to stream on Paramount Plus. United Artists releasing aired the first trailer for the film during the 2021 Summer Olympics. Social media accounts promoting the film on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook had a total of 415.4 million followers, including 234 million followers from the cast. Overall, the marketing campaign delivered at least 1.2 billion impressions and 407 million views online. Marketing tactics included radio, social, and ticketing partnerships, television spots, and promotions on TikTok, Twitter, and Snapchat. Crime podcasts were used to attract younger audiences. In theaters, trailers for the film ran during screenings of Respect, Reminiscence, Dear Evan Hansen, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, No Time to Die, Halloween Kills, The Last Duel, Eternals, and King Richard. By November 25, United Artists Releasing had spent $12.8 million on television advertisements promoting the film. Home Media House of Gucci became available for streaming on February 1, 2022. It was released on Blu-ray and DVD on February 22. Reception Box Office House of Gucci grossed $53.8 million in the United States and Canada, and $100.5 million in other territories, for a worldwide total of $154.30 million in the United States and Canada. House of Gucci was released alongside Encanto and Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City, and was originally projected to gross $1520 million from 3,441 theaters in its five-day opening weekend. The film opened nationwide on Wednesday, November 24, 2021, and made $4.2 million on its first day including $1.3 million from Tuesday night previews from a total of 345,000 theater admissions. House of Gucci went on to debut to a $22 million five-day opening. The main reasons given for seeing the film were Lady Gaga, the ensemble cast, and the plot. Audiences were 45% between the ages of 18 and 34, and 34% over the age of 45, a higher-than-average result for a drama film targeting an older audience during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Deadline Hollywood, House of Gucci had the best box office opening for a drama film since Little Women in 2019, and Forbes predicted that the film would become by far, the most successful adult-skewing non-action drama of the so-called pandemic era. The film made $7 million in its second weekend, $4.1 million in its third, $1.99 million in its fourth, and $915,339 in its fifth. In its seventh weekend, 
the film crossed the $50 million mark in the US and Canada while also finishing 10th at the box office with $616,744. Outside the US and Canada, the film earned $12.8 million from 40 markets in its opening weekend. The top countries in its first five days were the UK, France, Mexico, Spain, and the Netherlands. The film went on to make $14.8 million in its second weekend and $10.1 million in its third. In its fourth weekend, House of Gucci grossed $4.1 million and crossed the $100 million mark worldwide. The film earned $3.16 million in its sixth weekend, $4 million in its seventh, $4.4 million in its eighth, and $2.8 million in its ninth. Critical Response On the review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, 62% of 365 critics' reviews are positive, with an average rating of 6.20-10. The website's consensus reads, House of Gucci vacillates between inspired camp and doer drama too often to pull off a confident runway strut, but Lady Gaga's note-perfect performance has a timeless style all its own. Metacritic, which uses a weighted average, assigned the film a score of 59 out of 100 based on 57 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B plus on an A and to F scale, while those at post track gave it an 82% positive score, with 60% saying they would definitely recommend it. Deadline Hollywood noted a strong divide between critics and audiences and said, it appears moviegoers are overpowering. Screen Rant commented that although the film received mixed reviews from critics, the performances of the cast were highly praised, with particular emphasis on Lady Gaga and Jared Leto. Alyssa Wilkinson of Vox gave the film a mixed review, praising the performances but criticizing the screenplay and writing. The movie the trailer is selling is actually a little more dishy and wild than the real House of Gucci, which would be a pointless and somewhat perfunctory dud if it weren't for the brilliance, or madness, of the performances. Reviewing the film for The Hollywood Reporter, David Rooney wrote, Ridley Scott's film is a trash-tacular watch that I wouldn't have missed for the world. But it fails to settle on a consistent tone over long and undisciplined as it careens between high drama and opera buffa. Richard Roper of the Chicago Sun-Times gave the film two and a half out of four stars, writing, Adam Driver and Lady Gaga have legit chemistry together, and it's still a kick to see Al Pacino roaring like a lion in winter. But Hayek and Irons are playing cardboard-thin characters, Leto flounders about as if he's in a movie all his own and House of Gucci feels coldly calculating when it should have been flush and warm with scandalous sensationalism. Writing for the New York Times, A. O. Scott found the film to be a missed opportunity that could have been crafted more in line with better cinematic standards, stating that it lacks the necessary vision or inspiration. Gaga's Italian accent was met with criticism by Italian actress and dialect coach Francesca De Martini who worked on set as a dialogue coach for Hayek, and claimed that Gaga's accent is not exactly an Italian accent, it sounds more Russian. BBC stated that Lito's portrayal of Paolo Gucci inspired both ridicule and irritation. Film critic Mark Kermode described his performance as parodic, writing that while others adopt faintly ridiculous Italian inflections, Leto delivers his lines in a string of high-pitched whoops that suggest he is attempting to communicate with whales. David Ehrlich of IndieWire described Leto as brilliantly over-the-top. Responding to negative reviews characterizing the cast's performances as high-flown and jarringly incongruous, Michael Schindler of the American Conservative wrote that such comments overlook those performances' relation to the film's dramatic substance a conflict of high-flown and jarringly incongruous personalities vying to remake Gucci in their own image, arguing in that vein that the film, like Scott's All the Money in the World, is a historical drama about the emergence of a new man whose very character is adapted to the demands of contemporary commerce, comparing J. Paul Getty's role in the latter to that of Tom Ford.